Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the year again. After a small vacation, I'm back here and I'm going to announce what are the classes that I'm going to be playing mainly in The War Within. Of course, before we get started, let me clarify that this is going to be my personal preference and personal opinion, not necessarily what's going to be meta classes. And then second, keep in mind that there are probably a lot more changes coming in the beta, but for me to change my opinion, something really drastic needs to happen, which I think is unlikely. So let's get started. That probably comes as a no surprise, but I think I'm going to be maining my shaman for sure in the war within, and the raid buff that we received is not the only thing that is going to lean me towards that decision. There were a lot of recent changes to all three specs and the promise that more is going to come in the war within and although the changes were not perfect, it's looking bright for the future and it's feeling really good to play even as of right now. In general, the Shaman, Restoration Shaman in particular, has a pretty good utility for Mythic Plus, now it brings a buff too, but at the same time it can also pump in rates. For Restoration Shaman you have two hero talent options, Totemic seems to be the way to go as it's really strong right now, you get free chain heals, you get free healing rain, the hype is there, but I also like the Farseer a lot, and that just got buffed. So. I hope that I'll be able to play both of them in the War Within and maybe there's going to be new situations for both specs. There's a little bit of a scare right now that Restoration Shaman could follow the Holy Paladin path where it got so good then Blizzard started nerfing it to the ground until it was actually unplayable, but as I said previously all the changes are not perfect so maybe there's a hope that this is not going to be the case and the class is going to remain in a pretty good playable state no matter what happens. The other thing that I'm going to mention is, as you probably know, I'm a big Enhancement fan, and even if that doesn't work out really good in The War Within, because there are some signs that that might be the case, I started learning Elemental as well, and before the pre-patch I had a lot of fun, things probably changed a little bit with the pre-patch, but it looks like Elemento is going to pump from the little testing that I've watched on the beta. So it pumps as a healer, it pumps as a DPS, you have options to be ranged, to be melee, viable hero talents for every spec, so that's very very easy pick for me and this is definitely going to be my main, as it's also going to be required to have one shaman in the raid, so one of the three specs is going to fit there for sure for my guild. As a main ode, I'm going to play Mistweaver Monk. I'm a big fan of the M plus gameplay style, not so much for the rate when it comes to the Suiting Mist build, but I'm going to primarily play it in Mythic Plus anyway, so that's a big plus for me. With the most recent changes, the class is actually looking very good, a lot of things were removed, but then that power went back into the regular spec tree and into the hero talents, so it's shaping out to be a very powerful spec for Mythic Plus with all the utility that it brings and Conduit of the Celestial's uh, Hero Talent Tree is also looking pretty damn nice. Now if I have to rate on it, I'll give it some serious uh, consideration because I know that fist pumping in the raid is kind of a thing but it's definitely not superior. Uh, but as I said previously, the plan is just to play it in M+, and it shines there, so uh, it's definitely a big plus for me. I personally do not play the DPS and the tank specs of the monk, I just don't like them, I've tried them, they just don't vibe with me. But I love the Mist River playstyle so much that that doesn't matter at all, so it's definitely going to be one of the classes that I'm going to be playing the most in the War Within. The top 3 of my healers list, surprisingly maybe, is going to be the Preservation Evoker. It's very engaging playstyle with different combination of uh, other healers abilities, you have some reactive spells, you have some pre proactive abilities, you have different small cooldowns that you need to juggle around to provide a lot of different interactions between themselves, which could be hard to manage, but if you do it correctly it's a lot of fun and very satisfying to play, with some downsides as well. We have to mention that the small range is a problem and bugs are even more annoying because people are standing everywhere and you have some frontals that you want to hit them with. 
but you cannot. The augmentation evoker is also a big problem for preservation because it seems like there's no way for that to go out of the meta, but that only stands true for the higher keys. If you're bugging, actually I would argue that augmentation evoker is not that good because you're relying on the rest of your party. If one of them is bad, you're basically missing two spots in your group and that's very, very bad. So I would argue if you're not doing world first keys, you actually don't want to have augmentation in your group and that's a plus for preservation evoker, which also brings lust and a lot of other utilities and defensives. Personally, I'm hyped about the Chrono Warden hero talents. They provide several of the different tier sets and bonuses that we've seen in Dragonflight and I enjoy those a lot. But there's also the Flame Shaper, which is a different kind of a playstyle. It's a very heavy hitter and it has a lot of different interactions that you can do in the engulf ability. So that's something to consider as well as a secondary option, at least for me. I will also mention that I'm a huge fan of the raid gameplay style with the Emerald Blossoms build, which is definitely something that I look forward to doing in The War Within. And last but not least, I spent a little bit of time playing the different specs. I've played a little bit of Devastation, a little bit of Augmentation Evoker, and both are actually a lot of fun. Augmentation could be a little bit boring for me, but Devastation, I definitely had a lot of fun playing it in the pre-patch as well, a little bit on the beta, and that's some options that you have on the table if you don't want to heal or you want some variety in your day-to-day -day gameplay style. So all of that makes it a very solid pick for me as I play all three specs. I enjoy the raid specs. I enjoy playing it in M plus most of the time. So uh, this is definitely going to be something that I'm looking forward to in the war within. Let me now mention some of the other healers and why they didn't make my top 3. Starting with Holy Paladin, that's something that I've always played. It was almost always my main ult. I even made it for one of the tiers in Dragonflight and I had a lot of fun in Shadowlands. But I'm a little bit scared of what Blizzard might do with it based on what happened with it after the rework and then the nerves that basically bury it underground. I'm also not a big fan of uh, micromanaging Blessing of Summer, the Lightsmith new skills. They're pretty good, but all of that goes a little bit too far for me. That's a minor issue. Besides, Herald of the Sun looks uh, to be the way to go, and that feels amazing to play. But another red point for me is that Blizzard doesn't seem to know is that going to be a melee healer? Is it going to be a caster build? Is it going to be a hybrid? And until they have like a clear path, defined way that we know we're going to be following, that's going to be a little bit on the sidelines for me, just in case. I'll definitely keep an eye on it in the War Within. I'm also a Retribution Paladin fan, so I'll probably try to have some at least moderate gear on it. But for now, it's definitely not going to be one of my top picks. Restoration Druid. The caster built with Keeper of the Grove is something that's a lot of fun and I'm actually looking forward to trying in the War Within, especially with the most recent changes in tuning that brings up the class up to a decent level compared to what it was before on the beta. There's a pretty good chance that people will still play it as the main healer in very high keys just because of the buff and the utility and the damage that it provides, but I'm not a big fan of it when it comes to Pax and Mythic Plus. I'm also not such a big fan of raid healing on the Druid, so I'm gonna be muddling with the new hero talent specs just to see how they feel and how they play, maybe get it up to KSM, but that's gonna be all for Restoration Druid in the War Within at least for now for me. And last but not least, we have the Priest. I'm a big Disciplined Priest fan, not so much for Holy, and with that being said, Void Weaver seems to be a really nice pack to play, but both of the Healing Priest packs seem to be struggling a little bit compared to other healers. They both have the Oracle Hero Talents, which is simply something that I don't want to invest time into playing as I don't like it, it's not fun for me, which cuts the options basically on half for both specs, unless you want to be forced to play something that you don't want to. And let's also mention the lack of interrupt and uh, the dispel profile that the priest has, which is going to be pretty bad for season one in the war within. 
with all that being said, it's just something that doesn't vibe with me and it's not something that I'm looking forward to playing. However, I played a little bit of Shadow Priest uh, waiting for this dead season right now to be over and I actually enjoyed that a lot. So if the time allows me, I'm gonna play a little bit Priest probably mainly as DPS and Shadow, but I'll keep an eye on it and I'll have the option to switch to some of the healing specs and see if they progress and develop a little bit in the War Within. So those are my main choices, again those are personal preferences so don't take anything I said as granted but do let me know in the comments below what is your preference and do you agree with everything that I've said in this video. Maybe you can leave a comment that's gonna make me change my mind, you never know. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video, thanks for watching, now get out of here.